Hello and Alex. welcome everybody. Good Hi, morning. I'm Michael. Good morning. Good uh, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, Hi. every everybody. Thank you for joining. Hi, Michael. How how are you doing? Well, welcome back from vacation. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> actually, I got up much earlier you, today than I can did for the last two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, did, did you have a good time? Yeah, we had a good time. So we uh, yeah. went visit to to visit friends in Berlin, and then when we went we went camping, and so we did a lot of board games, role play games. Um, uh, we did archery, a little bit of stand up paddling. I didn't fall into the water, which was good, and <laughs> swimming, and uh, just had a good time with friends, which was good. We did, even did a live stream uh, on on Saturday, so uh, <laughs> of our on, on, text based role, role play game, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Game. Okay, yeah, yeah. So good time, uh, great uh, weather. It could have been a little bit warmer, but uh, it was okay uh, for camping. You don't want to have, you know. 35, 40 degrees of heat in your tent, after all. No, yeah. So, yeah, it was yeah. really good, and uh, but also happy to be back and uh, have fun with you and, and you all. Uh, so let us know what you, where you're watching from, right? So because we have a vacation-themed episode today, so let us know where you're watching from so you can join yeah. in from that perspective. Make, make everybody a, a little bit jealous. Uh, <laughs> Uh, depending on where you are, I saw that uh, a colleague of ours um, is currently in Spain, and he posted a picture in our group uh, team chat where he said, hey, "This is the this is the spot I'm working from the next two weeks, and it's basically nice waterfront. So it's really nice. There's a road, and then there is the beach. It's like okay, go, great. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> let me let me find something uh, equivalent to that, and I was not sure I. I don't think I will find anything that's, that's as good as that. Yeah, so you have to post a picture from the farm with the horses or something like that. Right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so. <laughs> so as close as I can get. Um, well, here we go, Kenneth, Cape Town. That that sounds uh, lovely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although it's that winter there, good. so mm, I don't know. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah so. Uh, All right, let's good time away, but in. also happy to be back. We have a lot of stuff uh, coming. Uh, notes is coming, right? So CFP is still out uh, for notes. Uh, so that's perfect segue, which you didn't plan actually, right? <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> yeah really, uh, really no, that was good. That was good uh, over. Uh, uh, you know, getting us, getting us there. So yes, uh, I just wanted to say, uh, no, 2022 Kofo Papers is open. Uh, it's open until the 20th uh, of August. So you've got uh, exactly 20 more days, uh, including today, uh, to submit your um, your um, your proposals, talk. Uh, yeah. your, your talk. The the website is is also live. So uh, maybe you can you can jump over uh, quickly here. Nice. If you go to um, neofotecom slash notes 2022 and I'll uh, I'll post it in chat as well um, then you come to this page uh, and you you find some more information why attend uh, when when is it what is it all about uh, watch some videos from last year's edition uh, but then here is is where it is and then you click on call for papers and then the session is, uh link opens and then you can uh, type in your uh, your text uh, and submit um, yeah. great. your your talk. So that that should be fun. Uh, Nose is always great. So I, I mean, um, Michael, you you know this also because you've been taking part in these for for since the beginning. Yeah, and uh, you know, the the, fu the fun thing is you 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 can talk to uh, fellow developers and data scientists, uh, exchange up with the graph community, ha have a good good time. Generally, it's very friendly, very open. Like more or less all of the things we're doing here. So um, it's great content. It's, it's it's a good it's a good event. Yeah. Uh, it's online, so that's why everybody exactly. Can take so it's place. really good uh, technical uh, presentation. So, for instance, if you have you know a library or a tool that you love to use with graphs, if you have a good way of importing data, if you have something written yourself or something that you came across or something in, in your project or a graph visualization that you really like, so all kinds of technical content are really welcome uh, there um, as such, or a collaboration tool or a tool that gets data from somewhere interesting. I came across a cube uh, 
uh, Kubernetes, kubectl, visualization tool that uses Neo4j yesterday. Stuff like this. Mm. So there's lots of fun because graphs are everywhere, right? So in in healthcare, in um, in software development, uh, in, uh, in in fraud, in you yeah, know sciences and finance. arts, yeah. finance, uh, digital humanities, you name it. Yeah. So there's so Supply many applications chain. and yeah. exactly, and 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 technical topics are super super welcome because that's what developers and data scientists are interested in, and uh, so please. Uh, come and share and we also do uh, around the world uh, so uh, you know, because notes is online and virtual so you don't have to travel or get uh, uh, get up early in the morning or something like that to present we try <laughs> to accommodate many time zones as many time zones as possible uh, so yep. please don't let yourself be hold, held back uh, by where you live or so uh, because we really try to make it a global conference that's very inclusive uh, as such and if you know someone who could submit, please tell them as well, of course. Right? Yeah. So if yeah, they don't watch the stream, but you do, then please tell them that this is really uh, worth submitting to. Yeah. Good morning, John. Thanks for joining. Um, hope you are well and your Monday is uh, good. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's jump back to here because uh, there's another thing I wanted to uh, highlight before we dive into the topic is the weekly challenges. So um, uh, maybe actually go back here. Uh, our uh, colleague Trevor uh, is hosting weekly challenges in the, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit if I can. Yeah, there we go. Um, is hosting weekly challenges on our Neo4j community page. So if you go to community.neo4j.com and you go on uh, the Graph Academy tab here, uh, you find the weekly challenges and um, yeah, he's hosting uh, weekly challenges where you can uh, do a little bit of cipher and, and explore uh, and, um, you know, just just for fun, really. It's uh, this is the current one. Uh, lots of directors it's, it's, is what it's called. Uh, and you create a, a recommendation sandbox uh, and then you query a little bit of, of things here. A return a row every movie in the graph that has at least 10 directors. Uh, 10 directors wow that's that's a lot of directors for a movie but okay and um yeah <laughs> and you, you get a list uh, <laughs> it's, it's what's what's the what's, what's, what's the word um too many cooks uh, uh spoil the spoil the soup yeah yeah exactly i don't think sounds like it so i don't know <laughs> how many i mean yeah. it might be some like episode movies where you have like different yeah. episodes that have been directed by different people and they're cut together or something yeah. like that or I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you can have a look next time. Exactly, you can uh, have a look. You'll, you'll find out. So you, here you go, and then you type in. Uh, you can type in your uh, uh, solution. Either you do it just for yourself, or you, you actually um, nobody right. replied yet. Yeah. You you reply uh, with your with your code uh, example here, uh, and this is uh, I think a fun fun activity. It's going on for a couple of weeks now over the summertime. So if you are uh, itching for some graph fun uh, and you already yeah. finished Code Golf, then this is maybe. Um, maybe a fun activity to do. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, okay. Well, with that, let's actually go into the topic. So discover uh, Neo4j already be free is what we do today. Uh, just quickly, um, we have, um, this is what we do. Uh, we, we pick a data set uh, as ever. If you have a data set you'd like us to, to look out, you found something interesting, fun on, on some, wherever. Uh, you have your own data or you have something uh, interesting you want to share then let us know we can we can have a look at it we we think about a couple of questions we we, we would ask from that data set we uh, create a data model and we load that data model into RDB and query a little bit and see uh, what uh, comes back so that's that's the general plan um, RDB free is the free version of Neo4j RDB. So if you go to uh, like the little uh, text at the bottom of the pay, uh, of, of the stream here, uh, dev.neo4j.com slash discover aura, you, you go, uh, and I'll post that in a second, you go to, um, to the registration page and all you need to do is just log in. You can either use your Google account or some other um, mechanism or just email and password uh, and then create your own account. And that's all you need. Uh, and with that, you um, you get a, a free instance. It's limited to 200,000 nodes and 400,000 relationships. Um, that was just recently increased. So uh, if, if you tried it before and uh, it was a little bit um, too limited for you, um, 
you know, it's it's been upgraded. Um, you get access to Neo4j browser and Bloom, so you can obviously also use the the visualization um, um, capabilities of Bloom. So that's that's fun. It's free forever, so it stays with you, unlike the sandbox, which went away after a couple of days. Um, or a DB stays, uh, or DB free is is yours um, as long as you use it. And um, yeah, uh, let's let's get going. Today's topic. Michael picked a very summary vacationy uh, theme. So sorry, Kenneth, uh, but maybe for you, you want to escape the cold. Come 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 <laughs> over here. Um, here it's hot. Um, we go into Airbnb property listings. I actually don't know more about it. So you just told me Airbnb property listings. I guess that's vacation summer or well not summer i mean vacation places around the globe uh i, I guess i don't know what what, what do we have yeah. <laughs> yeah. exactly uh so uh if you want to put up my screen we can look into that yeah. so um it, it's really interesting. So a colleague of ours, uh, Will, reminded me that we have this uh, uh, um, property listing uh, data set that we can can use to describe, uh, you know, rental properties. You know, rental properties is not just the properties. There are lots of details and attributes and who hosts it, where is it, it uh, located and, 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 and so on. And uh, so uh, interestingly, so uh, you all might know Airbnb uh, and have used it for either vacation places or, or other uh, stays in cities or so. And uh, for folks that are in wintertime, there's also a skiing thing here on the like, skiing category as well, for, right? So, um, so there are lots of uh, places you could go and I'm actually quite envious looking at these beautiful pictures <laughs> <Yes>. from Croatia, <laughs> <laughs> and Norway and, and Sweden uh, mm. kind of wants me go away <laughs> again. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so there's a page called Inside Airbnb which actually is a little bit more uh, critical of Airbnb and how it's affecting cities and neighborhoods and uh, property prices and 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 rental uh, rental uh, levels and, and and around the world, and mm -hmm. they actually scraped a lot of Airbnb data. Uh, and there are a number of cities that uh, where data is available uh, for Airbnb. Airbnb itself doesn't have an API where you can fetch all the data, so they basically scraped Airbnb and made this available. And so that's what we can use as uh, as input data for our for our graph, right? Mm -hmm. And our colleague Will has put together a GitHub repository with some details here uh, that will follow uh, uh, roughly uh, and and see how far we get. Uh, such, okay. Right? Um, so the data is available as CSV files, and we'll uh, just load them. Uh, into Neo4j. We can actually play around uh, with loading them with load CSV, but we could also use the data importer, uh, which is also available on ORDB and ORDB free as well. Uh, so we should probably also update the, the uh, slide to mention data importer as well. So um, if you look at one of these listings, right, so that's why I had actually the Airbnb page open. So for instance, if you take this Croatia uh, location here, right, so what do we have? We have uh, a name for the uh, locate uh, for the property. We have a location, which is kind of neighborhood, uh, city, uh, country, uh, county, country, basically. And um, then pictures. We we won't import the pictures as such. But what else do we have? We have a host uh, for for the property as well. And then we have a lot of enmities, right? So. Uh, so yep. all the attributes of the property, right? So that uh, can be everything from from wireless to dishwasher to uh, fridge uh, to uh, what do they have here, like beach access and and, and, and things like that, right? Or balconies mm -hmm. and, and and so on. So kind of all these amenities where you basically can um, pick and choose what do you need for your for your stay, uh, and which you can also use to compare. Um, compare properties if you have like in a similar location multiple properties and you want to have something that's very comfortable or very sparse if you're more often very uh you know minimal person and you don't want to have a lot of stuff then you can probably also minimize the, the number of amenities <laughs> that you have um yeah. and then the last thing is kind of the, the location and uh so that's basically uh, the data model that we're looking at right so we have uh the listing itself at the host who hosts the uh 
uh, uh, property, the amenities, uh, the neighborhood, which you then can kind of drill down into city, county, country, and, and, and so on. Oh, and then, of course, we have reviews, right? So because on, on Airbnb, it's really important to, um, to know that it's actually a good place and that you're not kind of being set up and, and that the host is uh, good and easy to communicate with and, and available if there are like any issues. And that's why uh, Airbnb has a lot of uh, review data as well, right? So there's a lot of uh, reviewing this. Interestingly, it shows on the, on the front page, uh, this lighthouse apartment, but there are no reviews, which is kind of really interesting. That's uh, very interesting, yeah. <laughs> because you wouldn't the, think I guess the that good, they the good spaces are all... You know, yeah. Maybe everything else is gone already. Oh, because, because it's, it's new. Obviously... That's why it's here, probably. So, but if you look at obviously, this Norway yeah. apartment here, we should have uh, reviews. And then these reviews are written by users and they have like an, a text and a rating and, and drill down as well for, for the review data as well. Yeah. Right. And uh, that's what we're going to uh, use for our, our graph model. To, to right so and um, if you want to model that uh, we have the listing uh, which is hosted by a host uh, has amenities and reviews are written by users and the listing is in a certain neighborhood as such right. mm -hmm. cool and uh, to start with we should probably start I should have done this before is actually uh, to create an ordb instance uh, so you just click on create instance and then you can pick uh, ordb free if you want to see more detail about the instance you can see it here I'll pick the name listings and uh, pick Belgium as my uh, location and create an empty database because I don't have uh, any existing data yet. And I now I can actually also download my uh, credentials. So I can just uh, save this to my listings end file, replace. And then I can continue. Uh, we can also copy the password. The copy button is a little bit hidden away here, so they need to fix that uh, as such. But so now it will take a few minutes, two minutes or so to uh, get the database started. I should have done this before, but let's see. Last time I did it, it was pretty quick. It is, yeah, it usually is not so long. It's, 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 right. It takes a little bit um, to go. Yeah. If you want to create models like this yourself, uh, there's a really nice app called arrows.app uh, that you can use to host, uh, create these uh, models. So for instance, uh, you just go to arrows.app and, and say, I want to create a new model, uh, store it in my Google Drive or local web browser storage. And then we can start creating these nodes. So you can pull out nodes out of the halo here. So we have a host, uh, which hosts, uh, Hosts a listing, you can reverse the arrow, uh, then a listing is in a neighborhood. Uh, neighborhood. Was this actually English or American spelling? It's American because it's... Fuck. Uh, in a hood. And then uh, we have the amenities. Not sure if I mistyped this. Amenity. Yep. Come on. Amenity. Oh, and the relationship is has amenity. Right. And then you can basically start modeling uh, your data. And then uh, the last bit was uh, location. All of us reviews. Uh, so review is uh, written by a user and uh, a listing has reviews. So review. Although I think when you when you already have a um, you, you you know you plan with uh, with CSV files you want to use, then um, I guess using the data importer is exactly. Is, and I just wanted to, to uh, yeah. yeah pass the time until the data. Yeah, yeah, of course. Then... Uh, Eros is also great if you if you. You know, it's a different, a little bit of a different scenario. Uh, yeah. If you use uh, arrows, I think it's more like a whiteboarding tool. Uh, if you want to draw your graph, if exactly. you, you can you can do some exporting. Uh, you know, you can export an image and stuff. You can even export some rudimentary cipher, but it's not getting you all the way to the um, import. The, yeah, exactly to the import. Uh, the the data importer does that. So, um, yeah. Uh, if, if, so if it's more have... like a whiteboard tool. That's that's exactly that's correct. Right. Yeah. So which is if really, you have files uh, already, you you want to import eventually into into Neo4j, then go go with the data importer. If you yeah. just want to draw 
uh, a graph and, and see what, where, where it gets you um, and maybe to show it to somebody to discuss a few things but, but it, while you're in the process of the of the model creation um, then yep. the, the arrows exactly. app is, is, is cool and actually you can try to use uh, data importer for this as well so uh, let's see the database should be ready by now I think yes so if you click on query which gets us to a uh, new studio browser uh, we should see uh, that database is still empty. Yep. So this is an empty database. And here we want to get our data in. So what our colleague Will has done is um, he has put in a, a browser guide, uh, guides.neofj.com uh, listings index.html. And this gives us the import and then some ex uh, interesting queries as such. Mm -hmm. So, and there's a little bit of introduction about browser, about Cypher load CSV, and what it does and what it uses. Uh, the data model talks a little bit about inside Airbnb. And then here's the data model that we've already seen. And uh, so it has an amenity in neighborhood and a host host is uh, uh, property and then there is um, in the in the graph you can have of course also attributes on the at, uh, on the nodes as many or as few as you want and also on relationships as well. So then there's a little bit of cipher intro which you can skip I think and uh, then it goes in, into the model. And actually uh, it uses here uh, the listings.csv file so which should, should give us the uh, listings and um, amenities in the neighborhood uh, as such. Yep. And uh, there is also an, uh, it's also in listings.csv, but there's also a host inf uh, information. Oh, it's also in the listings, super. And what else do we have? Reviews is in a separate file. That's so okay. I already downloaded the uh, listings file so I think I can just get the the host file as well, and the reviews file as well, and then we can actually use data importer instead of um, instead of load CSV and see how far we get uh, for the import, right? Yeah. So cool. So that means uh, from from our Neo4j Aura instance, we can actually click on the import button. Uh, connect to our database. I'll just have to get the uh, password again. One second. From my downloaded credential file, which contains uh, password, connection information, and um, database name as well. So, and then I clear out our old model from the last time. And then we can start importing and modeling our data here. So first we'll add the two uh, CSV files, reviews and listings. Um, that you can see here on the left side, and there's a lot of uh, data in there. Mm -hmm. And then we can start modeling our data the same way as we did uh, before, right? So we have our listing, uh, we have a host, uh, which hosts this listing, so we can also uh, enter this here. And then we have our neighborhood. Neighborhood. Just need to make sure that uh, I don't misspell it, otherwise the example queries won't work, which I don't want. And then the listing also uh, has uh, amenities which has is just an has relationship, if I'm not mistaken. And then a review uh, is written by a user. So you can see we can do the same kind of modeling that we did with with arrows itself in with a data importer, mm. uh, which is really nice. But here the modeling has actually uh, a real meaning because now we can uh, start mapping our data uh, to the model, which is really, really cool. Right. So, yeah. so that, you see that's well, exactly the handy. same model, but currently it's all dashed lines, so there's no data mapped or data connected to it as such. Yeah, that's that's the indication that the data is not, not there yet. 
Right. So, and then uh, I guess we'll get started. Uh, we'll probably need to sneak a little bit into the um, into the original source uh, that we had from Will here. Actually, I can also open this file in, in my browser, so I don't have to scroll back and forth. Uh, sorry, uh, not index, but import. So, so we have it all on one page here. So, so we start, uh, I mean, if you just look at load CSV itself, um, you can just look at the data that's, that's in there as well. So you can, can load the data from an, from an URL, return uh, each row. Um, and if it, if it has headers, then you get like map like entries back, right? So where you have key value entries for each uh, uh, attribute like country or URLs or licenses or calendar entries or reviews per month or lots of other stuff, right? So this is an mm -hmm. Austin, uh, Austin data set actually, right? So uh, inside Airbnb, a host them per city. So you pick a city and it gives you the data for that city, basically. Um, oh, okay. So what we can do here is now look at the at the model that will put together. So we get for the listing itself, we have listing ID, uh, takes the ID, and then we have uh, name, price, weekly price, cleaning fee, this property is a type. A little bit small, Michael. If you want oh, to, sorry, zoom in. Uh, I'll make it a little bit bigger. So perhaps like this. Yeah, it's better. I think that's cool. Uh, so we have listing ID, name, price, weekly price, cleaning fee, property type, accommodates, bedrooms, bathrooms, availability. Right. So let's look at this. Uh, so we uh, click on our listing node, we select the file listings, and then we select properties from files. We said uh, ID, perhaps listing URL, name, we can even put summary. Um, then there was, um, can probably do, uh, property type and room type accommodates, uh, you could also do bathroom, best bedroom, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, there is price, I think that was in there. Price and and weekly and price and and mm. monthly price if I was weekly price and cleaning fee and uh, property type accommodates bedrooms bathrooms and availability okay so bedrooms bathrooms what's interesting they have two point five bathrooms here so it's actually not an integer <laughs> but it's a float <laughs> which is interesting. Um, I don't know what a, what a half a bathroom actually is. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know either. So uh, it's perhaps just a shower somewhere in the garden or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> cleaning fee uh, and three sixty five availability. This was yeah. this one, right? Yes. So okay. So there could be more more stuff that we want to import as such, yeah, but it should be probably mostly it. Yep. Confirm and it copies all the stuff over, and we had accommodates as an actually an integer. Uh, so we can change this to integer. Bathrooms we saw that it's actually a float. <laughs> yeah. Interestingly, I'm not sure if you also want to make bedrooms into a float. Yeah, just just make it a float just in case. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the weekly price and the cleaning fee is in float as well. Unfortunately, uh, I don't know if you saw that uh, for the actual price. Oh no, all the prices actually have a dollar sign prefix, prefix, which is a little bit unfortunate because that's not yet handled by uh, the data importer. So it basically has, uh, if you look at that, our data importer, it has a dollar, where is it here? Dollar 300. Ah, uh, okay. And dollar zero. So the probably need to keep the prices as strings and do a post-processing afterwards. Uh, so we need to remember that um, as such. But availability should be an integer. Oops. And then we select the ID as uh, our ID field. And that's part one, right? So our listing is mapped. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one would be the amenities. And uh, we 
see that it's actually uh, a little bit ugly. So it's probably also something that we need to do in post-processing. Um, Yeah, it's a list. Mm. it's a list and with weird things here. So we'll probably just import them as an attribute and then do the post-processing in, in browser. Uh, there's amenities. Bad types here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an curly brace comma separated list of some kind, basically, right? So mm. uh, which is really interesting. Um, okay. So you probably might need to uh, leave this off here. And uh, so if you continue, the neighborhoods have actually a neighborhood cleansed uh, value. So that's what we can use. Uh, so let's go back to data importer and we use our same listings file again and we use uh, neighborhood cleansed, this one, I think. Is this cleansed? Yeah. Uh, which is also our ID. And uh, what we could do is kind of also add the um, city and country and, and, and state as well. So either we put it into the neighborhood itself and then pull it out in Neo4j itself, or mm. we could um, do it in um, here in data importer as well. So we could also say a neighborhood is in a city. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. So which we is try to get out a little bit more. Yeah, which is in a state. Uh, let me just pull this up real quick. Um, and I need to look at the model uh, relationship type. Uh, relationship types, and we have a country here. Right? Um, so we'll pull this yeah, out well, later yeah, on. Yeah. And uh, what we can also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and what we also need to do is to map the relationship here between uh, the listing and uh, the neighborhood cleansed. It's a lot of, <laughs> can you see it? Here. That was, yes. Yeah. Right, so that's our relationship here. Uh, the next one is uh, looking at the host information, uh, which gets the host, there's a host ID, and then we take the host about, superhost, location, and image. Okay, let's do this. Should be pretty straightforward. We, again, for our host, take our listings file, uh, select um, everything that's with host. So host name, host since, host location, host about, host is superhost, host picture host URL. Picture. And perhaps you can also say home. Uh, but host ID was missing. Where's, ah, here's host ID. And host URL, perhaps, right? Mm. Uh, confirm. And our ID properties, host ID, and then we map uh, again our file from listing ID to host ID. Host ID. Okay, that's that. We got the neighborhood as well. Uh, amenities we do later, and reviews is this extra file, which where we basically take. Uh, the reviews data. We have a user uh, which has a reviewer ID and reviewer name, and then we have a review ID, uh, date, and comments, and we uh, map to the listing ID. So we basically can map three properties from this, uh, sorry, three nodes from the single file as well. But that should be quite clean and uh, should be straightforward. Reviews, select from file. Uh, review ID, date, and comments. Right. By the way, John explained what half a bathroom is. It's a it's an American phrase for a small closet type room with which many have sink and uh, and a toilet. Oh, so okay. It's, it's basically like a yeah an extra toilet. Okay. Like like an a, extra toilet, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah in Europe you would a, probably say guest toilet or something like that, right? So, so uh, yeah. uh, okay, reviews. 
Thank you, John. And for the for the user, we take the reviewer ID and the reviewer name, which is our uh, ID here, and we map uh, reviews file uh, review to user. And then we only need to map the uh, relationship from uh, mm -hmm. listing ID to review ID. So that was pretty straightforward, right? So because reviews didn't have so many properties as such. So we should also everything should be green here for reviews as well. What's kind of uh, unfortunate that these reviews don't have like ratings, like stars or something like that. Uh, that would be nice. So in the last bit should probably map, be mapping the uh, the city and, and, and so on. Uh, so we can do this either in data importer or we can map it in uh, in the so it's neighborhood located in city in state in country okay but I think we can do it in data importer so we don't have to do it manually uh, so this is located in uh, also the listings file and the city is basically just in uh, City should be somewhere after. Um, what is this? Okay, you should probably map also here neighborhood overview and neighborhood name. So we have the city. Um, where we map uh, just the city name, I think. Yeah. And uh, then we do um, the property and locate it in from neighborhood cleansed to a city. And then uh, in state, right? Uh, in state, in country. Okay. So in state is our uh, state here. Listing, select from file. And then we have bed, bedroom. That is under city. Oh, ah, yeah, there, yeah. So, I mean, because this is all Austin, Texas, we can probably also leave off the, the state and the country mapping, right? So, uh, yeah, it doesn't make so much, uh, or we don't need it as such. So, what you probably also want to add to uh, the um, listing is the uh, latitude, longitude as well. Uh, so perhaps you can add the country and, and state just to the city. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Country code, country, zip code, state. Okay. So, and then for latitude and longitude, we change them to floating points. Uh, unfortunately, data input does not support... Um, spatial properties yet cool and that's it uh, amenities we have to do manually basically so i'll remove them for now otherwise the input won't run and mm -hmm. then we can actually click on run import and if we didn't do anything wrong it should get us some data into our database let's find so out so let's <laughs> have a look uh, if the data comes in uh, and when it's done, we can actually, oh, I, there's actually a new feature in Data Importer, which I forget, forgot about, which is preview, uh, which is now a little bit late, uh, but actually you can run it. And then uh, it shows you actually a pre preview of your, of your data without actually importing it. It just ah. pretends to import it. And then you see uh, like Shannon, Elise, like. Erica for the hosts. And you see actually that the direction of the host relationship is in the wrong direction, uh, right? Yeah. So that's something that you see in, in the preview, basically. Mm. We could have fixed that. And, and so we could have fixed that. And 
you can probably still fix it. No, but this is in the right direction. Okay, so Maybe perhaps the preview has a has an issue. That's interesting. So we had here are hosts. And I think the direction is here wrong, right? And also points to the neighborhood. So something is wrong here. So this is this is the yeah, neighborhood is probably. Wrong. This is the yeah, so this seems like uh, the wrong direction here. Okay, so we have some feedback for the team to to fix that. <laughs> uh, let, let me take a screenshot. Okay, uh, but now the import is done and uh, in data importer, so I already closed the uh, import uh, results. But you can still look at them. So it took 58 seconds. It imported uh, 5,000 rows uh, for the listings, 4,600 nodes for the hosts, 41 neighborhoods, 62,000 reviews. So we are still under the uh, limit. Uh, but we wouldn't have been under the limit for the old sizes, right? So now with the new ORDB uh, sizes, it's much nicer. 55,000 yeah. users, 12 cities, which is interesting. And uh, perhaps it's like neighborhoods of Austin. Um, and then uh, the relationships as well. Right. Cool. And then uh, we, uh, if we click on start querying, it would open Nifty browser and we could uh, show it here. But of course, we have it already open. Uh, it should show us the data now. Let's see. Um, match and return. M. P. Return P limit 100. So. It's not connected. Why is it not connected? Hmm. That's weird. Session expired. Uh, Maybe we we got. Yeah, to... should probably not uh, be. Oh, I closed the wrong one from the. Um, but no problem. We can just connect. And now we should have data in our database. So we have hundred thirty thousand yeah. nodes, hundred thirty thousand, uh, forty hundred forty thousand relationships, and now we see our listings here. Uh, with the amenities and everything as well, right? So we have also the URLs here that we can click on and then it should open them in a, a new, new tab as well. Uh, oops. What happened here? Maybe the listing Or perhaps the URL is uh, not correct anymore. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so these are our um, apartments and we co have connected the apartments uh, to neighborhoods and then someone who hosts uh, the uh, apartment and then we can see do they have other directions. So this actually looks also wrong here, right? Yeah. Or perhaps so I messed up the mapping. That could be uh, the case that I actually mapped. No, we have listing ID to host ID. Hmm. That's weird. So something didn't work well yeah, here. So okay. uh, we need to fix that. Um, okay. Um, and now we can see, for instance, how many who are super hosts and, 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 and things like that, right? So we can, for instance, say, uh, find me all the hosts, uh, which are where h dot superhost uh, is true return count star. 516 uh, limit 10. So we get 10 super hosts and then we see, okay, they have one uh, one property. Uh, we can also ho uh, look at um, which hosts actually have the most um, yeah. most properties as, as, as such, right? So, so we can just say a host uh, and then listing. And then we just return host and count as uh, number order by number descending limit 10 
and then we see that this host has 127. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty. Uh, oh, turnkey vacation whole... rental. So it's a company, basically, right? Um, oh, okay. As such, and the next one, 626. They will probably also be companies or so. Oh no, he's uh, in a startup, and he has 27, 26 things that he hosts. Okay. Uh, this person here, what's his name? Martin. Uh, do you see Martin here? Here, here's that Martin. Right. Yeah. Martin has 26 uh, pretty Pro impressive Proper properties in Austin. Yeah, that's very, that's very nice, yeah. uh, I, I guess. Yeah, and um. Actually, I, I saw uh, there was, uh, let me see. Um, uh, H. Name equals Shannon. When we were in Austin for Graph Connect, I think. Uh, the host name was Shannon Contains. Contains. Huh. I thought I thought I saw her in the in the data, but uh, no, it seems. But perhaps I just misread it or something like that. Anyway, um, so we have our data in here, and I know we have to extract the amenities, and we can basically take and and steal the uh, surface statement from uh, Bill's guide, and uh, we can quickly talk through what it does. Um, Oh, we need to do the prices as well, right? So we need to do the weekly price, the cleaning fee, and the price as uh, two float basically from. Yeah, because of the dollar value. Yeah. Because of the dollar sign, exactly. So yeah, we'll sign, just yeah. uh, do the following. We just steal the statement here. We match the listings. And then just set listing price and then just uh, keep these. We just. Yeah overwrite them basically with uh, the prices from uh, that are converted right uh, so so it said now all the prices should be in in dollar uh, numbers and floating point numbers oh sorry not the host listings the hosts. right uh, bathrooms 1.0 price 40 dollars yeah okay super so it looks uh, correct now. So these are the prices. And then the other thing is the amenities, uh, which is this kind of really weird. Um, so it's this long list. Yeah. A list. And what we do is basically we again steal these, uh, this, this bit of cipher. So we find our listings and we take all listings basically. Uh, and it has this kind of weird uh, curly brace list, basically with so which sometimes has quotes around stuff, sometimes not. And we just uh, split it by comma and um, replace all the curly braces and uh, quotes and everything uh, with nothing. Right, So curly brace go away, uh, the quotes go away, and then uh, we split it by comma. Right? Yep. And that's our amenities, and then we create a node for the amenity, and then connect them. Uh, the only thing that what we probably want to do is create a constraint uh, on uh, a amenity assert a dot name is unique, and I can't write constraint. So. Okay. Yeah, we do this because of uh, duplicated value. So if yeah, so uh, we, and, and also that it's faster to look up this uh, this node because the constraint will also create an index and then it doesn't take so long. So and uh, this is not a row but listing dot amenities. So it created forty two nodes only for amenities, but. 82,000 relationships, right? So you, we now have amenity here, like for instance, every everything will have a TV, but yeah. 
not everyone might have a pool, right? So we can look at how many of them have a pool. Actually, because it's Texas, a lot of them have pools, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a and, lot of um, pools still. So we can, for instance, see what's uh, the number of amenities that uh, property listings have, right? So we get our listings and we say with L, uh, comma, uh, size of L uh, has amenity as amenities I, I just write number because amenities are so hard to spell um, <laughs> um, and then we can just say min number uh, max uh, number and average number right and then we see okay at minimum amenities is one maximum is 31 and average is 14 right yeah so we could actually look at which listings have only one. Yeah, that is a, a sad right. listing, I think. Where number equals one. And then we just return the listing. And have a look at these listings. Uh, what was this? What, what is the amenity? Oh, that's... Uh, let me... But that was more than one, right? That's weird. Oh, but because they're connected to, uh, what my, uh, just one second, limit, uh, let's see, five only. So these are five, uh, and this has, uh, which amenity is this? Nothing. It's an empty, empty. one. Okay. okay. Uh, and they're all connected to this empty one. So it's probably ones that have like just nothing in there. Uh, yeah, in their maybe writing, there was some data, uh, data uh, uh, problems or something. Yeah, okay. exactly. And uh, we also have the one with 31 amenities, which is one listing. And it has oh, everything, oh, right? 24-hour uh, yeah. check-in, hair dryer, hangers, terrace, uh, indoor fireplace, TV, hot tub, Shampoo, nice. someone put in everything. A yeah, gym. gym. It doesn't even have a gym. Okay, but then and now I'm curious. What massive modern house? Yeah. Okay, downtown, downtown modern, modern party, party house. house. <laughs> okay. Okay, but it's also four four hundred dollars a night, which is actually I, I I mean these are like older prices, but that actually it's today up, yeah. it's not that expensive anymore. Uh, so today all everything else is much more expensive in Austin, I, I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we as we've seen at uh, at Graph Connect, cool. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the other thing which is interesting is reviews. Uh, as I said, unfortunately, we don't have like the um, we don't have the rating itself in the in the data, which is a little bit sad. Uh, but what we can do is basically see which listings have lots of reviews, right? And then we can say basically, uh, um, oops, listing. Reviews. Uh, this listing, and then uh, return l, comma count star, order by number descending as number. Mm. What's wrong? Is this also the wrong direction? This has also the wrong direction. This is really weird. Hmm. Okay, I think I'll need to look into that. Uh, why these have the wrong direction? Um, so these have 314 reviews, right? So, so if you look at this one, um, it's pretty popular not so expensive accommodated for six people uh price per yeah. night oh i think that's also price per night in person right so i'm not 100 percent sure yeah. and um and i just wanted to see if there's like average trading or so i know we didn't import average trading so right but you can basically see as um what's uh in here what we now can do is basically if we take these um 
imagine we take these uh, reviews that have a lot of uh, these listings that have a lot of reviews, let's say the top five or something like that. Mm -hmm. We can actually find uh, how they are similar in terms of, of amenities, right? So, or which other uh, ah, okay. listings are similar to these in terms of amenities. Uh, yes. And uh, yes. L. So, which ones share the same amenities basically uh, with these top five uh, as such? And uh, with L2, L1, L2, count star, as a number uh, where number equals, I want to have all of them basically, right? So um, I want to say uh, the number of shared amenities is equal to the number of total amenities that our listing has. As such, right? So this is kind of the number of total uh, amenities that our listing has, mm -hmm. and between L two and L, I want to have this count should be the same, right? So I want to see which other listings, um, for instance, but we can, for instance, also say, uh, uh, and no, where uh, L two dot price is less than L1 dot price or something. Ah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Right, so <laughs> cheaper, but same quality, same, basically. Yeah. Right. Oops. L2. So. And now we can see these are kind of uh, properties which are cheaper, but have the same number as our top uh, amenities, right? So which also have a lot of amenities, but are cheaper than uh, the original ones. Right. So this is, for instance, a uh, more graphic query where we actually follow the graph uh, and create a similarity, right? So yeah. the um, the properties that have similar number or similar kinds of amenities are similar. We could also say now, uh, uh, and uh, where they're also in the same neighborhood, right? So we can also say, and exists uh, L2 in, uh, neighborhood, neighborhood, and then so we also want them to be in the same neighborhood as well, right? So uh, we can just say, uh, and there's a relationship from this L2 to a neighborhood, which is the same neighborhood as the L1 neighborhood as well, right? And then we get an error because exists. So, and then we get basically um, ones that are in the same neighborhood and have the same number of amenities, but are cheaper, right? Yeah. So we could even say they should be like at least 40% cheaper or something like that, right? So when you then multiply the price with 0.6 or something like that, then it's basically only uh, a fraction of the price. But this is something that we could do on, on this data. The other thing that yeah. we can do is oh, basically use the spatial oh, attributes. Mm -hmm. uh, then we need to create an um, set L dot uh, location equals point of uh, L dot latitude and longitude so we create a map which has a latitude and longitude entry and we create a point and we create a new location point here and then we can also say where a uh, distance between uh, locations is really dense or, or or far apart right so for instance i can find a random listing uh, so i just find one listing where we have a location mm -hmm. where uh not l dot location is null and then we we want to find uh other listings or for instance a location where where i imagine this would be a location where i am this listing i'm staying at and but i have to move out 
and uh, I need to find stuff uh, that's close to where I am because I don't It's want close to by. Yeah, yeah. get so far. And so where, uh, then I would say where distance uh, of uh, L dot location comma um, L two location. If you don't need a where, we can just say uh, return L two comma distance as dist whatever by dist ascending limit five and then it computes the distance between the two and um, we get the closest five closest ones in meters basically right. yeah and in this in this case i guess it just takes a, a random a random first yeah. node and then calculates yeah. the and we forgot to create yeah. an index on a listing location that's why it took longer than expected and it should now hopefully much faster let's see why is it not faster huh. where this is interesting uh, let's see profile this should actually be really fast but I'm not sure why it's not fast. So this is 10 kilometer, so this would be one kilometer distance, for instance. Okay, let's look at the profile, because it should use the index. Here it uses the index. Hmm, weird. I mean, it's a cross product, right, of 5,000 times 5,000, which is mm. 1.1 million. Comparisons. Uh, but this should, should give us the closest. It's probably the listing itself. Uh, that's exactly at the same distance. Or that uh, these are ones that don't have locations or so. Or they are the same location. Oh, they're probably. Uh, Rooms in the same house or something like that. that have the yes, same uh, maybe. You see private exactly. room one in South Austin and private room two in South Austin. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's private one. Okay, these are that all was different. same house. <laughs> yes, that's the same house. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we should probably say uh, greater than point one or something like that, right? And then. Or we just say, I oh, don't know, listing is the same. So yeah. this is one. Can point, I even say? Uh, yeah. yeah. This is 1.7 uh, meters away. So it's also really close. <laughs> is this the same thing? the same no. complex or so. Yeah, OK. But uh, so these are some of the queries that you can run on this. Uh, Will has also in his, uh, in his guide uh, that you can also find in the GitHub repository. Uh, he has also things like what's most expensive in a certain neighborhood, for instance, right? And uh, and similar uh, queries as well. So for instance, uh, if this, or oh, we probably didn't, uh, did you import a zip file? But I, I think here the direction was also wrong, right? Or no, neighborhood ID and dot name. Hmm. Average price. What did we What did we do wrong? Zip. We should have zip. M maybe yeah. zip is still a uh, string. No, we don't have Is zip it? here, and we don't have a neighborhood. We don't have name as well. So because you imported ah, okay. it slightly differently. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, but uh, you get the idea of the query, right? So you can basically look at uh, prices in neighborhoods and find expensive or cheap neighborhoods and and, and things like that as well. Right. Yeah. Yes. So there's lot lots to be done with this data model and. I think we'll put together an, uh, a nice version of this uh, for Sandbox, which combines the listing prices within uh, OpenStreetMap data set. So we have uh, like spatial roads and, and points of interest and the listings ah, okay, cool. uh, as such. So that's the idea. That's also the reason why I wanted to revisit this and see what's uh, uh, what is in here. Cool. Yeah. I guess that's it for today then, right? So we are over time already and- uh... Yeah, that's cool. Uh, um, 
I think that's an interesting data set. It gives you uh, obviously fits the time. It gives you some some vacation vibes. Uh, so I. <laughs> Uh, I could, I could, uh, I was inspired. Yeah. So um, no, it's it's great. Uh, let, let us know um, what what you think of this. If you uh, if you have tried this yourselves, uh, put it put your your thoughts in the in the comments, obviously, uh, to the YouTube video. So that would be interesting mm -hmm. to hear. Um, uh, I think it's 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 a good uh, a good exercise because it it gives a couple of of touch points right you you can calculate a few things graphy things you have uh, longitude latitude so geospatial uh, is in there as well so um yeah yeah that that's that's interesting um, exactly there's some so, good 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 stuff in here that you can can do uh, definitely so we'll even continue here with keyword extraction and other other things as well which then does like takes the uh, descriptions and to turns them into keywords or topics as well so that you get ah, okay uh, things as well yeah. yeah yeah i mean potentially you could even do some kind of uh because uh, we don't have star ratings but we have uh, we have the text of the review so you could do some kind of sentiment, do sentiment. Analysis yeah exactly by uh, by doing um, uh, um nlp over the um uh, over the review text so yeah I mean, there is, exactly. there is potential, but totally. uh, not, not, yeah. for, not for not for now, not for today, um, but but, but, still, for uh, yeah. but for another time, exactly. So uh, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for uh, um, you know uh, and jo joining us to uh, today. Yeah. Um, I have um, two more things I want to say. One thing is. Uh, Going Meta is taking place tomorrow, uh, 5 p.m. Central European time, 4 p.m. British, uh, 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific. Um, so um, that's already the seventh episode. So if you are into knowledge graphs, ontology, semantic, web, uh, all of that that good stuff, please join Jesus and me uh, tomorrow, um, my afternoon, your whenever. Uh, and on Thursday, uh, I have a next episode of uh, um, Neo4j Live. I have the, the people behind Known Rivalry. So that's a sports uh, data set. So uh, after the, one of the bigger football rivalries yesterday taking place, Germany against England or England against Germany in the Women's uh, European Championship, uh, where unfortunately uh, Germany lost, uh, we, have, uh, we have some data. We look into sports data uh, on... Um, leagues so baseball basketball uh, american football uh football cool. uh, soccer uh and and, and look between uh you know, the data that there is between uh, the rivalry between uh, uh, teams so that should be fun as well that's taking place on thursday uh also uh in the evening uh european time so if you have time uh if you're interested in any of this uh i'm hoping to see you there um uh yeah and until then I wish you all a, a good time. Thank you again, Michael, for, uh, sure. for showing uh, the, the data set and uh, giving an intro. Yeah. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> take care, everybody. See you soon. <laughs> cool. Take care. Bye-bye.